Hey guys, Vladimir here with Desktop Makes. So last week I looked at approaching this spider bowl design, uh, specifically creating the spider pattern here and creating it to follow the contour of the body. So this was a body I took into the sculpting environment to make. So it's not a perfect sphere. Um, and there were some challenges on getting this uh, shape here to extrude and follow the pattern or the contour of the spider bowl. So we looked at some options there and um, hit a few roadblocks. And finally, what worked for me was going into the sculpting environment and using the pipe tool there. So check out that video if you want to see the workflow I took there. Now, in today's video, I wanted to address some of the comments that I received um, from you on uh, that video. There's a couple comments I wanted to look at and one of them was by James Dragger here uh, who said I think you can extrude lines then thicken in the surface environment also extrude from object at least those are the first things I try I don't know if they would actually work the way you'd want um, so I wanted to look at into that and give that a try and there was also another comment here uh, by HPE Christensen who said, I believe the problem with the solid pipe is when three lines meet at one point. If you do the rings in, and radii separate, are you sure the solid pipe will not work? So those were two excellent questions that I thought were worth um, kind of revisiting. So here I'm going to go to another design here that I've kind of pulled back the timeline to where I just have this uh, the body here and then the sketch that I created uh, on that center plane. So remember this sketch is just on the center um, plane here, that front plane, and it's, it's a complete flat um, sketch. And what I want to do is take this and create a body that follows um, this contour here. So let's try James's suggestion here of going into the surface environment and try extruding the lines and then thicken them. So let me untoggle the body here. So one really important thing I want to point out here uh, that is going to be very valuable to know is that when you're in the surface environment and you hit E for extrude and then you select your object here and then you go ahead and extrude it, it'll basically um, mimic the same uh, extrude function as in your solid environment. So you're basically extruding a profile, right? And, and you're getting this entire shape, which is kind of the challenge here because that's not what I want. Uh, I want to be able to just extrude lines. So that doesn't work. So, and it's different. The point I want to make there is that it's different when you hit E um, versus going up to your menu and then grabbing your extrude option there. And now if you select it and then you take your air and extrude it, now it actually does let you extrude lines. So be careful there. Don't think just because you're in the surface hitting E on your keyboard, um, and then grabbing it from here is the same thing. You get completely different functions. Kind of like when you're in sketch mode and you hit F for fillet, it throws you back out when you're actually using 3D fillet and it's different from modify fillet. But anyway, um, so we uh, have this situation now where it does kind of work. We're getting our lines, but it's not grabbing all of them and it's random as to like which ones it picks. And so it, it almost gets in, it doesn't quite get there. And then I, uh, I tried something else, which kind of made all the difference here. And it's just a very subtle thing. So if I do the order um, uh, differently, if I, for example, select first, if I drag select and then go to create and then extrude. Now, when I extrude this out, um, it'll actually, oops, let me bring that again. It'll actually work and grabs all my sketch lines. So. The difference there is if you go to create extrude, if you do extrude first, then select, then it, it kind of behaves randomly. You see it doesn't grab all of them, but if you select and then extrude, it works. So if anyone knows why that is, let me know in the comments. Um, probably I might send this to Fusion um, or Autodesk and see if they can provide some feedback on why it behaves that way. But um, but <laughs> good to know. So make sure, you know, if you're kind of going for this workflow and you hit uh, the same wall that I did, um, just make sure you got the order right. So, okay, now we have it to actually extrude the lines. I'm going to bring in the body here and I'm going to change the operation uh, to not start at the profile plane, but to start from object and then click on the surface here and it works. 
So um, James' comment there actually works really well here. Oh, well, up to this point. So let's say here, I just want like negative two millimeters. I'll set that and now I've got a new body as operation. And I've got this extrusion of surface um, surfaces from that sensor plane. Um, and it mimics this contour here of that body. So I get this. So very cool. The next thing, the approach I would take here is to go um, and thicken. And this entire, uh, all these bodies here, you can see I've got all these surface bodies. Um, that was a problem for me when I tried doing that. I pretty much got the little spinning wheel of death and I had to restart fusion. And I think the problem there as well is like it, all these intersections here, um, just the calculation is a lot for it to make and it didn't work. What did end up working is if I separated these so that I had um, just the outer um, parts here like the outer rings um, and then I did those separate from sort of the spokes here so if I did the the thicken in two passes it worked I'm not going to do that right now because it's it's going to take a while for me to unselect and then do them both each at a time but basically do the outer rings uh, all three together first and then do these um, spokes uh, in two different thicken operations and that worked this workflow will work for you if you kind of go about it the right order and do certain things the right way. Um, but I, I don't really recommend it because it's kind of long and when you're doing the thicken on all these parts, it takes a while for Fusion to do those computations. It's, it's sort of heavy um, for the machine to handle. Um, so the other approach I wanted to look at here was uh, Christensen's comment. Let me find it here. And so I believe the problem with the solid pipe is when three lines meet at one point. Uh, if you do the rings and radii separate, are you sure the solid pipe will not work? So um, let's try that. I'm just going to delete actually this last step here, my timeline. So I'm back to one body and I've got that sketch in the center. We're going to try that pipe method, but first let's go back to solid. And I do need to um, project this sketch onto this surface. If you recall from my last video, create sketch on this my front plane right here make sure you select the right plane and I'm gonna now go ahead and project this sketch uh, onto the surface here and to do that you go to create uh, it, it, it's different than just like a regular project if you go to project include you have an option that says project to surface so I'm gonna click on that I'll first click on curves here and then I'll drag select all my sketch curves and projection type, I'm gonna go with a long vector and then I'm gonna click on uh, project direction and for that I'm gonna select the Y axis or that green axis there and then I'm gonna go back to my faces and then bring in that body and then select this face that I wanted to project, click OK. And now you can see it took that flat um, sketch there and then projected it to match this surface. So a great tool there to take advantage of. Now I'm going to click finish sketch and I'm just going to show that projected sketch that I made. And now we're going to try that pipe tool again, but we're going to do it in, um, in different um, selections. So we'll do the outer ring first and then do these uh, lines. So we're going to go ahead and go to create down to pipe. And here you kind of do have to um, select these uh, individually. Uh, which is a bit of a pain, but no, no big deal. Um, if you did have these lines in separate sketches, um, then you can like drag select, but I won't, I won't be able to do that. And you have to do them in three different operations. So I'll do the outer, uh, bam, there, click OK, and then right click, repeat. The nice thing is that this is quick. You don't have to wait, um, you know, for it to calculate. And so it seems to be pretty straightforward for Fusion to create these calculations. And of course, uh, you know, I have this my section size sent to one millimeters and a circular as the section. Um, so we'll do that and it's going to create a second body notice for which it's created its own creates its own bodies there. And then I'm going to do this intersection here. And select all of these and now I can click OK. I'll have my three bodies there. And I'm gonna do one more, and that's going to be these lines here coming in. And I'll just select those. Oh yeah, so for this one, it's, it only lets you do it um, two at a time. So we're gonna have to do that approach as well. Change this to new body. 
Um, yeah, so it doesn't let you go ahead and select more if I try to click on more, it doesn't work. Uh, and if anyone, um, you know, if you have different workflow here, you think would make this more efficient or a different path you would take, let me know. Uh, kind of like, you know, well, I enjoy getting the comments and then um, following some of those paths, you know, sometimes you get some, some really good um, advice there and some uh, paths that I might not be thinking of ways to follow. Um, okay, so now we've got all our bodies here that we need. So what I'm going to do, I can take this now and combine it into one body. You can kind of see I have all this going on here. Um, let's do, you know what, I'll just do it all in one shot. I'll go to modify, combine, select my last body here, and then shift and select everything else besides the pumpkin body and do operation as join and a lot of selections here so you might have to wait a few seconds I'll click OK and hopefully it should work and all this collapse into one body which it did so beautiful and now I've got my one uh, spider uh, spider web body here and I can take this and now and create a pattern uh, a circular pattern um, to create them on all the four sides. So I think this is the approach I, I you know, I think I like the best. It, it was more straightforward. Um, although the other, you know, going into that surface environment and pulling lines, it's really good to know because there are, you know, designs where that workflow is really going to come in handy. So, uh, you know, I'd still keep that in your back pocket. But this one here uh, for this particular approach, I think is more straightforward. Um, and the issue there was, yeah, it was just, uh, um, when you have a complex shape where like a bunch of lines are coming together in one point, um, it can be hard for Fusion to tackle and resolve that. So just doing them in different selections when you're creating the pipe tool or when you're using the pipe tool um, works out well. All right, that's all I wanted to come in today and show you um, this approach and kind of address some of those comments. So uh, any questions or any other paths you want me to take, I'm happy to jump in and kind of follow, uh, follow that workflow and see where it leads us. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you guys enjoy videos like this, uh, consider um, supporting my channel uh, by becoming a Patreon uh, supporter. So I've got the links to that below and I've also got some links to my online courses if you want a more structured approach to learning Fusion 360. All right, I'll be back in a few.